Merhabalar, hoş geldiniz demek istiyorum öncelikle. E, vakit ayırdınız. Bugün çok şahane bir üniversiteyle bir araya gelme şansı e, elde ediyoruz. E, aynı zamanda e, çok şahane de iki tane öğrencimizle birlikte. Biraz sonra onları da takdim ediyor olacağım sizi. Ben çok kısa kendimden bahsetmek istiyorum. E, British Education Bureau ve Sevda Öncel Bat olarak. E, çok özür diliyorum. Hemen şöyle görüntümü de ayarlayayım. Şöyle yapacağım. Okey. Süper. Evet, e, BB, e, B, BB British Education Bureau'nun kurucusu aynı zamanda eğitim direktörüyüm. Kusura bakmayın. E, Gazi Üniversitesi mezunuyum. Alman dili ve eğitimi e, aldım. 1998'de mezun oldum. Akabinin de Oxford Brooks Üniversitesi'nde International Management Master'ı yaptım ve ondan sonra BB'yi kurduk, kurmaya karar verdik e, İngiliz e, kurucu ortağımla birlikte. Peki BB kimdir, BEP kimdir? Bağat Üniversitesi'nin Türkiye'deki resmi temsilcisiyiz. Temsil ettiğimiz üniversitelerimizin e, Türkiye'de tanıtımına destek veriyor. Üniversiteler için Türkiye'de organizasyonlar gerçekleştiriyoruz. Tıpkı bugünkü organizasyonumuz gibi. 2002 yılında Oxford'da kurulduk. E, 19 yıldır da İstanbul, Ankara ve İzmir'deki ofislerimizde öğrencilerimize hizmet sunuyoruz. Uzmanlık alanımız İngiliz eğitim sistemi, üniversitelerin giriş şartları, başvuru süreci, süreçleri yönetmek. Tüm danışmanlarımız İngiliz eğitim sistemine vakıf bu konuda eğitimler almış uzman bir kadrodan oluşmakta. Birleşik Krallık'ta 130 tane üniversite bulunuyor. BB 90'ının Türkiye'de resmi temsilciliğini yapıyor. Temsilciliğini yaptığımız üniversitelerimiz için tamamen ücretsiz hizmet sunuyoruz sizler için. Ben şimdi sözü yetkilimize ve değerli iki öğrencimize bırakmak istiyorum. Hemen buradan şöyle yapacağım. Sorry James, I'm just uh, facing technical problems today. That's okay. It happens to all of us. So it sorry, us. it's probably my 50th um, webinar. Uh, it's just, um, here we go. I'm going to stop sharing after I, I see my screen fully. Çok özür diliyorum. Bugün evet teknik sorunlarla karşılaşıyoruz. Çünkü e, ekranım büyümüyor. Büyümediği için de şöyle yapacağım. Farklı bir şekilde deneyeceğim. Stop video diyeceğim. Okay, o da olmadı. Pardon. Okay. I'm trying to find another ways. Okay, it's it's okay now. Um, so share screen. Okay, James, over you now. Um, oh, sorry about okay. the technical problems. No, so, no problem. Uh, James, James, um, and Anneli are from University of Bath. Um, University etkilerimiz Berak Balcı ve Tuğce Büşra Suda. E, şu anda her ikisi de Mimarlık Fakültesi'nde doktor öğrencisi. E, sizleri değerli deneyimlerini de paylaşıyor olacak e, öğrencilerimiz. Sizler de hoş geldiniz. Teşekkür ediyoruz katılımınız için. Okay, James, over you now. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. So, hello everybody and welcome. Thank you for joining today's webinar. Really excited to speak to you all today. And I'm sure there are some people who have joined who you've already researched the university. You kind of know everything about Bath. And I'm sure there are others who are coming along thinking, what a strange name for a university. No idea what's Bath about. But all of you joining, hopefully you find today's webinar really useful, really insightful, and that you leave with more information than what you came with. Um, so really good to have you here. And we're going to go through, we're going to make it interactive, trying to get you involved as much as possible. If you've got any questions as we go along, please do jump in, type your questions in the chat, and also there'll be time at the end where you can unmute and you can also ask your questions then too. But Before we do anything else, um, we're going to do a bit more of an introduction now. So starting with myself, my name is James O'Grady and I work in the student recruitment team here at the University of Bath. 
And so basically, ordinarily, I'll come to Turkey maybe two times a year, three times a year, and meet you guys face to face to give you the advice you need, to give you kind of the information for you to make an informed decision about the right master's course for you. So if I've met you before, it's lovely to speak to you again. And if not, it's lovely to meet you for the first time today. Also today, I'm delighted that I'm joined by several co-hosts. Normally, I'm on my own, rabbiting away, but today I've got lots of support here with me. So first of all, if, uh, Annalie, if you'd like to just introduce yourself and maybe give a bit of an overview about what you do at Bath. We can't hear you, Annalie. Uh, I think you have to unmute. It's the classic. I'm so sorry, you'd think by now that I would know this, wouldn't you? So, okay, so really happy to join you all today. So thank you very much and I look forward to, to talking with you. Um, my name's Annalie Bamber-Jones. I'm the Head of Doctoral Admissions and Recruitment. So I oversee all the work that goes on for recruitment and admissions at the university, for particularly for postgraduate research for doctoral doctoral study and I'm representing the doctoral college today and I'll tell you a little bit more about the doctoral college um, as we go through the presentation. Perfect we look forward to it and I'm also delighted that we're joined by two of our current students so both from Turkey and both have come to Bath and are currently doing their courses their PhD programs here at the university. So if Berak if you'd first of all just like to introduce yourself get a little bit of information about perhaps where you're from and what you're doing at the moment. Okay, uh, hello everyone. My name is Berrak and I'm from Turkey, as James mentioned. Uh, I'm doing now my PhD in architecture and my PhD focuses on energy performance of the buildings. So I focus on more like modern buildings uh, to improve the energy consumption. Uh, currently, I'm in my second and half year of my PhD. So good luck to everyone. We will try to answer your questions as much as we can. Perfect, it's great to have you here. And finally also, Tukje, you're also here, you're studying at Bath. Would you like to give a, a brief overview of kind of what you're doing at the moment and where you're from, etc.? cetera? Uh, yeah, thank you, James. I am also from Turkey. I came Bath uh, in 2016, <laughs> so it, it has been a lot. <laughs> uh, I did my master in University of Bath in conservation of historic buildings and then continued uh, as a PhD um, in the same department. I focused more about the uh, historic mortars for conservation. Uh, I am in my second and half year as well and going to writing up my thesis right now. And um, I would like to say good luck to everyone because we all passed through this uh, process. So we are happy to answer your all questions or worries if you have. Thank you. Perfect. Now it's really great to have you both here and I'm sure that students will have lots of questions to ask you and I'm sure they'll be a bit nervous about coming to the UK. So both yourself and Barak, I'm sure, are going to be inundated later on with questions and, and, and kind of probes about how you found everything studying in the UK. Thank you, Dibjet. Perfect. Okay. So we'll kick things off then and dive straight in. Um, before we do anything else or go any further, what I'd like to now just quickly do is ask you guys, if we can, so we just buy that. I'd just like to ask you guys in the chat, what is your motivation for studying overseas? So anything you like, it could be one word answers if you want, you can elaborate if you wish. Just in the chat, type, why do you want to go and study overseas and do a master's or do a PhD either in the UK or maybe elsewhere too? So I'll give you one minute just to type something in the chat if you can. Um, I'll be really excited to see your kind of responses. While we're waiting for people to put in their motivations, maybe I'll bring you guys in here too. So maybe Barak to start with, kind of what, what motivated you to study overseas to start with? Why did you decide to come you know, to the UK to study? Uh, first of all, to do PhD, of course. And uh, secondly, I was always interested in knowing different cultures and uh, practicing English and know more people. Mm -hmm. yeah, these were my main motivations which came to my mind now. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, perfect. And how about your, yourself, Dibjet? What motivated you to study overseas? Make the big move. 
when you first uh, asked this question, I <laughs> remember my all uh, intentions to come abroad. Uh, it, it means like, a, first of all, I can say traveling. <laughs> mm. I really love traveling and I would like to uh, see as much as I can. And I believe... Um, from my experiences uh, being in other in other places improve in a different ways from the knowledge from the um, uh, personal experiences it's, it's improving in, in a different ways mm. uh, and also in academically I believed uh, if I would like to be in academia I should be uh, just break my chains and be mm. and be m more brave and to do uh, in a, to study in abroad. Mm, nice. Yeah, I think they're really good reasons actually. And, and the fact that you wanted to travel is also is also great because hopefully you got to see the UK as well. I know you're now living in Wales, so you've certainly seen two parts of the UK at least. So yeah, I'm glad that that kind of allowed you to go and see a bit more of the world. Um, students aren't putting in, in the chat. You're being a bit shy today. So <laughs> for the time being, I will move on, but do try to come out your shell and feel free to type in the chat later on when there's other parts of the presentation where you can participate. And don't worry, I'm not going to pick on you if you put a word into the chat. I'm just going to read it out. So don't be too shy. Later on, do feel free to participate too. Okay, brilliant. Well, let's move on then um, to find out a bit more about the university. Then. So to start with, why Bath? So why the University of Bath? There are many universities in the UK and also obviously in America, Australia and so on. So why choose the University of Bath here in the southwest of England? To kick this section off, I want to just, first of all, introduce you to where we are in the UK, just so you can get your bearings about where we're located, you know, in relation to London and so on. So to the capital of the UK, to London, it takes around 80 minutes at 80, 80 minutes to the capital, and it's one train that takes you directly from Bath Spa train station all the way to London. So we find that students often go on day trips to London. Maybe they might go for a weekend trip to London as well. And you also actually get increasingly students who are based in Bath and actually work in London once they graduate, as well as the general population, because Bath is such a lovely environment. Some people choose to stay in the city. And if it, they've got flexible working, they might actually commute to London once a week or twice a week. It is possible. Also close to Bath, we've got cities around us. So we've got Bristol, which is a big city famed for its music and its art. And that's only about 12 to 15 minutes by train. So hop on a train and you'll be there in no time at all in this big city with lots more to do. We're also close to other cities. Cardiff is about an hour away by train. And again, it's one train that takes you directly there. And also the Southwest coast of the UK has some really beautiful cities and towns for you to explore. Many people don't think of the UK as being famed for our beaches uh, or our weather, although it's sunny at the moment. But you might be pleasantly surprised when you do actually come to the UK to see all these places so close by within easy reach. So that's kind of where we are in relation to other cities. We also have airports within pretty easy reach as well. So we've got Bristol Airport, which is probably the closest. It's just under an hour away by coach. And that can take you to Turkey and it can take you to other, other cities and other places within Europe. And also, if you want to go further afield or you want more choice, there's also Heathrow Airport, which is around two, two and a half hours by coach from the airport all the way to Bath. And if you're coming in September, we also will offer students free coach pickup service. So if you come to Heathrow in September, August time, the University of Bath will actually organise coaches to collect you, welcome you to the UK, and also then take you all the way directly to campus. So you don't have to worry about that and the logistics and so on. But saying all that, I really want to stress that Bath is a UNESCO city. Fun fact of the day, Bath is the only UNESCO city in the UK. There are no other cities where the entire city, the, whole, the entire place is a UNESCO site. So it's a very unique place and we'll explore a little bit later on why that is. But in Europe, actually, there are only two UNESCO cities, Bath and Venice. So again, just kind of picture special place that is Bath, but I'm sure we'll hear later on from, from everyone what it's like to actually live in Bath as a student. Perfect, so that's where we are. Now also a little bit about the university itself. So in terms of the population of the university, you could say we're a medium to medium, yeah, probably a medium sized university. We've got 18,000 students. Of those, around 75% are undergraduate students, with the, the remainder 
made up by postgraduate taught and PhD students. And you might be thinking, why is it such a big chunk of the population being undergraduate students? One of the main reasons for that is obviously because undergraduate courses are three years or four years in length. Therefore, yeah, the majority of the population is, is going to be undergraduate. But we've got a growing and quite an international mix of postgraduate students here at Bath. We'd love to welcome you also into that community this year or next or whenever you're planning to go to the UK. Within that kind of population, we also have a vibrant international community. So of all our students, about 30% are from outside of the UK. And we have actually 130 different nationalities represented here at Bath. So it's a really nice, vibrant mix of, of cultures and perspectives. And we welcome students from Turkey every year as well to join us at the university. In fact, at the moment, we have around 30 students from Turkey currently studying at the University of Bath alongside students from across the globe. A bit more on that later on. But that's just to kind of give you a snapshot of the university and what it's like. And now we're going to very briefly turn to also rankings too. Um, and I'm, I'm very well aware that it can become quite tiring to keep looking at rankings. If you've been to a few webinars with universities, you might have had a ranking overload by now. So we're not going to go into loads of detail about rankings about every single subject and so on today. But I think it is important to give you kind of a, an overview of the university's kind of status ranking within the UK. So within the UK, we have around 130 universities. And of those 130, in all three domestic rankings, so all three UK rankings, we're a top 10 university. So we're, we're a triple top 10 UK university, which means that um, regardless of the criteria being used, we're seen as one of the best within the UK. So the Guardian, for example, which really focuses on student experience, student satisfaction, amongst other sets of criteria, but the real onus is on that student experience. We're sixth in the UK. Within the other, the other guides and the, the Times and Sunday Times um, ranking, we're ninth. And the Times and Sunday Times, for example, focuses more on employability, career support, things like that, alongside student experience and other kind of criteria they focus on. Employability is very important. So it's kind of peace of mind to know that regardless, we're a top 10 university. Enough on that. But a few more kind of accolades or things to highlight about the university is first of all, that the TEF, the Teaching Excellence Framework, has assessed us as being gold, which is the highest level, the highest standard of teaching quality overall. So the overall institution's teaching quality and standard is assessed by the government, an independent body, and we've been ranked as gold. So that just means that you can kind of have that peace of mind knowing that the university's teaching standard has been seen as the highest level. Alongside that, we're always very high up for student experience. And again, hopefully we'll hear later about how Tug Chair and Berak have also enjoyed their time at Bath. Um, and finally, graduate prospects. So graduate prospects is about students going on to secure full-time employment when they finish their course. And we're always around top four, top five for that because of points I'll bring in later on, but because we really ensure that students have the right skill set to find secure, find and secure employment once they finish their studies. So that's kind of an overview of the university in, a, in kind of a very brief two slides, some rankings for you to digest, um, and just kind of to give you that kind of, as I said, that overview, kind of that base knowledge about the university. Something else that we're very proud of is not just that our teaching quality is one of the highest ranked uh, in the UK, but also that we are a very good university for our research output. So we're a research intensive university. And in fact, we were ranked in the top 10 British universities in terms of our research quality. So it's very important that we not only allow our students to be taught at the highest standard, but also that they're learning from those who are researching also at the, the high end, the front of their game. So 87% of our research quality was in fact assessed by the UK government's REF. So like the TEF, it's a research excellence framework. And the government's REF saw that 87% of our research quality was either world leading or internationally excellent. And world leading is the highest standard research output you can possibly achieve according to the REF. Again, very important, particularly for those who are coming and thinking actually to do a PhD after you finish your master's or you're thinking to come directly onto a PhD program. 
So at the university, we have more than 80 research centres and groups. So there's lots of different areas of researching. And I'd really encourage you to go on our website to find out more specifically about those research centres. Um, but as I mentioned earlier, it's really important that regardless of whether you're coming to do a PhD or if you're coming to do a master's, the research quality of a university, the research output quality is very important for you regardless. Because if you're doing a master's course, you're still wanting the, the, the people who you're being taught by to be bringing the most innovative techniques, the real, real world relevance into the, into the classroom. So the, the research that they're, they're developing, that they're working on, they can bring it to you in the classroom and share their findings with you. So you've got that cutting edge kind of knowledge about your subject matter. Um, Annalie, I've been rabbiting on for a bit too much here. So I'm gonna bring you in to kind of give your own input yeah. from a cultural college perspective. Okay, I'm checking I've got my microphone on this time. Thank you. you. Have. So yeah, I think just building on what you were saying, James, I think if you're interested in doing doctoral research, and I think a number of you have expressed an interest in that today, then taking note of the research excellence framework score is really important. So doctoral research, it's not just a gateway into having a career in research and academia or in a scientific um, institute or in the private sector but it can be a really great opportunity if as an undergraduate, you found an area of study that you're really fascinated by, then you can really sort of narrow in and focus on that area and develop that knowledge and interest and that expertise that allows you to go on and develop your career in that particular area. One of the key factors in that, I think, is finding a really good supervisor and the REF score can help you do that because it, it assesses, not at the university level, but it assesses at the department level, the quality of the research output for, for a department where that supervisor is going to be located. So it tells you if there are really successful academics in that, that department, if they're doing some cutting edge research, um, if they're recognized leaders in their field, field or that they're working on high sort of profile projects so it's really worth taking note of those uh the the ref scores and what i thought i would do is i'm in the chat i'm going to put in a link to you for you which gives you a little bit more explanation about the ref if you're interested in research and then also a link through to more information about our department's research scores as well so thanks james i'll hand back to you Perfect. Thank you, Ali. Brilliant. So we're going to kind of wrap up this section with a little bit more information about kind of why Bath, and, and then we're going to move on to look at entry requirements and kind of the, the fundamentals that you'll probably need to know in order to make the next steps. Um, but yeah, just to wrap up, why Bath then? Um, I just wanted to kind of share with you kind of the university's ethos, kind of our kind of our fundamental beliefs as an institution. Um, and hopefully these will kind of chime with you and kind of align with what you want to get out of a, a university education and experience. So first of all, international connections is really important for us. Like I mentioned earlier, we have around 30% of our cohort, our entire university population made up of students from around the world. So from Turkey, from Russia, from South Asia, East Asia, and so on, from across the globe. We encourage students to come into the classroom and share their different outlooks, their different perspectives. So international connections is really important for us, but also our teaching kind of our academic pool of staff is also very international. So you have academics coming from across the globe. We have around 90 different nationalities represented within our ac uh, academia pool, so our academia workforce, there to teach you from their own perspectives as well, bringing their own research, but also their own outlooks into the classroom to teach you with as well. International connections is really key for us. Also employment skills. So the University of Bath embeds in pretty much all of its programs, both at undergraduate and at master's level, it embeds employment skills. So trying to ensure students are in, equipped with the ability, the skill set, to be able to not just you know, learn you know, the freshest information around their subject matter, but also to learn how they can apply it to the real world and how they can actually you know, secure full-time employment once they graduate. And that is a really a fundamental principle at the university. So regardless of what you're going to do, you'll find there's lots of support there, both within the course, but also within, within the wider university to help you ensure you get that kind of full-time work opportunity and support once you finish. You'll also gain real world experience. So whether that's doing a placement, doing a short-term placement, a practicum, doing a consultancy project as part of your master's course, 
or also learning from those who have come in from industry. So learning from those who are perhaps what we call professors of practice. So professors who have actually gone to industry and earned their prof professor stripes in the in industry, in the workplace. And they're actually bringing that to you in the classrooms. You'll gain that real world experience. And probably the really underlying everything we do at Bath is this work ready ethos. So all of our students, regardless of whether they're doing a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, a PhD, what we really want to instill in our students and what we want to give them is that work ready ability to go into industry, bring their knowledge, bring their skills. Obviously, the brightest and the best come to Bath, but also they, they leave with, as I mentioned, the skills to actually go and secure employment and secure a good paying full time job once they graduate. And as I will share later on, you'll have lots of support at Bath to enable you to do that. So that's why Bath. And I think what's quite nice is just to also go back to our kind of DNA. To, which ties in quite nicely with all of this. So it's not just like a new idea for the university. We haven't suddenly thought, you know, students these days want to, you know, have that connection to industry. In fact, within our DNA, within our chartership, which was kind of our contract with the government, giving us or granting us our university status, within that it actually states that the objects of the University of Bath shall be to advance uh, learning and knowledge by teaching and research. Again, research output is key for us but in close association with industry and commerce. So really from our very beginnings, we've been focusing on shrinking the divide between academia and the world of work. And that is really kind of our DNA as a university. And that is why you'll see things like placements on all of our bachelor degree programs, increasing number of placements, year long placements on our postgraduate programs, as well as other kind of opportunities for students to again, gain that industry experience. So that's the University of Bath's kind of strong point, I'd say, as an institution that kind of defines us. And now I want to kind of bring um, Barak in and also Tukje to share your own experiences about why did you choose Bath? So obviously there's plenty of universities as in the UK and also beyond. So what made you kind of narrow down your choices and decide actually Bath? Was it the rankings or was it something else? Um, start with Tukje, for example, we'd like to share why you chose Bath. Yes, James, thank you. Uh, Sorry, can I just uh, interrupt you? Uh, can we talk in Turkish, James? Would you mind, uh, Anneli? Uh, can, can the students uh, share their experience in Turkish? Uh, yeah, if you, if you prefer, Tukje, you can, you can share why you chose Bath in Turkish. I can't really participate too much. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can try to listen in. So yeah, if you'd like to. Tukje, anlatmak ister misin? Biraz daha detaya inebilirsin belki Türkçe olursa. Tabii olur. Ben tarihi binaları koruma konusunda, restorasyon konusunda akademide ilerlemek istiyordum ve o alanda seçeceğim üniversiteler arasındaki en böyle benim ikinci sırada olan böyle bir yerdi Bat. Neden burayı seçtim? Çünkü şehrin kendisi zaten tarihi binalar konusunda böyle müze gibi bir yer ve bu İngiltere'nin e, kimliğini oluşturacak e, binalar ve e, karakteri de aynı zamanda World Heritage Site olması da hani tamamen şehrin tamamının korunmuş olması da e, benim için e, bulunmaz bir e, şeydi. E, birin, ilk olarak bunun için. İkincisi tabii ki de e, rankingi yüksekti mimarlık alanında. E, ve üçüncüsü de ben böyle şey bölgede mesela James biraz önce anlattı etrafındaki şehirler özellikle mimarlık alanında bulunduğu şehrin de önemli olduğunu düşünüyorum civardaki şehirlerden biz çünkü site visitler yaptığımız için böyle hangi binalar nerede ben böyle diğer yakın şehirleri de gezmeyi ve oradaki binaları da yakalamayı umduğum için ee, hani tabii ki Londra'ya başka diğer merak ettiğim şehirlere yakın olmasının da önceliğimdi. Bunların hepsi birleşince Bat benim için e, inanılmaz bir seçenek oldu. Thank you. Bakalım. <gülüyor> Sound like a very detailed answer. That's all I can, that's all I can say. Thank you. And uh, Berk as well. Would you want to share why you kind of decided on Bath? Yeah, sure. Uh, ben ee, üniversite tercihi yaparken PhD için e, 14 tane üniversiteden UK'den kabul almıştım ve UK'ye daha hiç bir hiç daha önce gelmemiştim. E, masterımı İtalya'da yaptığımdan o zaman İtalya'daydım. 
Yani UK hakkında hiçbir fikrim yoktu gerçekten. Yani kafam bayağı karışıktı dolayısıyla. 14 üniversitenin hangisini seçeceğimi falan hiç bilmiyordum. Ama daha sonra e, tabii ki ranking çok önemli. O zaman 2018 yılında e, University of Bath mimarlık alanında birinciydi UK'de. Sıralamada en üst seviyedeydi. Yani Cambridge'den bile daha önceydi. Ee, onun için e, bu belirleyici bir faktördü buraya gelmemde. E, çünkü e, rankingi ne kadar iyi olan bir üniversiteden kabul alıp buralarda eğitim görebilirseniz o kadar iyi. Çünkü bu artık CV'nize yazılıyor. İşte bir kimliğiniz, sizin bir parçanız oluyor diyebilirim. O yüzden ranking çok önemli. E, bu e, benim için ilk faktördü. Daha sonra e, PhD deyince tabii araştırma, research e, önemli. Bence ikinci e, aşamada bir doktora öğrencisi için danışmanının ne kadar iyi ve bilgili olması ki bu da sizi e, iyi daha iyiye yönlendirir araştırma konusunda. E, danışmanlarımla e, yani onların paperlarını okuduğumda e, onların da benim istediğim alanda e, bilgi sahibi olduğunu gördüğüm için e, University of Bath'ı seçtim. Ee, ve diğer bir seçenek de tabii ki bir öğrenci için <gülüyor> belki bu en belirleyici olabilir. E, burs, işte scholarship ve funding çok önemli. E, buraya e, başvuru sırasında bursa başvurdum. E, bursa da başvuruyor gibi başvurdum. Çünkü ben MEP bursuyla gelmedim. E, daha sonra da burs çıkınca kesinleşti. Üniversite of Bath'a geleceğim. Teşekkür ederiz. Thank you. <gülüyor> Brilliant answers, both of you. Thank you so much. Um, brilliant. So um, now I want to hear again from you guys. Now you were a little bit shy earlier, but that's fine. Hopefully now you've built up the courage. All you need to do is, I'd be really excited to hear what you're planning to study in the UK. So is it a master's or is it a PhD? And for a bonus point, also if you can include the kind of subject area you're interested in, that'd be really useful too. So if you can just go in the chat on Zoom and just type in master's or type in PhD, and if you can also, the kind of area or the, the subject area you want to focus on, that'd be fantastic. I'm going to give you one minute to do that. So don't be shy, just type it in, Masters or PhD. Look forward to seeing your answers, guys. Perfect, we've got some coming through already, which is great. So Gorkham, you want to do a PhD, brilliant, in education. Fantastic. You have a really strong um, education department at Bath, actually, um, particularly in terms of research. Uh, Merv Kaplan, PhD. Perfect. And Delara, you're, you're looking to do a master's in clinical psychology, which is extremely popular, actually, and particularly students from Turkey, funny enough. Um, and Elif, uh, PhD in architecture. And then Mekmet, a master's as well. So it's a nice mix, actually, of kind of almost 50-50 split between master's and PhD. A few more coming through though. So, uh, masters in computer programming. It's a real nice mix here. Accounting, finance, PhD in artificial intelligence. Brilliant. Okay, thank you guys. You're thanks for participating there, and it's quite it's quite helpful actually to see kind of what you're focusing on, um, and it'll kind of guide the next part of this presentation. So that's brilliant. Thank you. And I'd say that's about a 50-50 split based on what you just put there. PhD and masters. So brilliant. Okay, so what I'm going to do then now? We're going to turn to just kind of giving you a, a kind of a, a rough overview, a picture of the university, the types of courses, the kind of departments we have, but we're not going to go into lots of detail about specific programs, the content of the programs, because as we just saw there, students today, are, you're all interested in a whole range of programs from all different departments, so it's just not possible to give you that detail about each course, but just to start with, just to kick things off, I just want to show you the types of departments we have. So you don't need to worry about this too much, but at the university, we're broken into four kind of sections. It's the Faculty of Engineering and Design, the Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences, and the Faculty of Science, and then you've got the School of Management, and that's kind of a little bit safe. So within Engineering and Design, you've got Architecture, Civil Engineering, Chemical Engineering, Electronic Electrical Engineering, and Mechanical Engineering. Um, so we are STEM University at heart, we're certainly within our DNA is a STEM university. We've got uh, the Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences is kind of a melting pot of different departments. So you've got economics, psychology, 
um, you name it, it's kind of in there. If it's not a science course, it's not a management course or an engineering course, it's going to be in the humanities and social sciences department or faculty. In the Faculty of Science, as well as like biology, biochemistry, computer science, we've also got um, departments like pharmacy, pharmacology and physics. And then finally, in the School of Management, they've got the generalist MSc management course and then specialised management courses like accounting and finance, like entrepreneurship and management, things like that. So that's just a kind of a, give you an idea of the types of courses, types of departments we have at the university. We don't have a law school. We don't have a, a medical school. So that's just something to bear in mind. Um, but hopefully, based on what kind of answers you put just then, it sounds like most of you've done a bit of research already because you've all chosen courses that Bath excels at, which is really good to see. And then again, I promised you earlier that I'm not going to kind of go into rankings too much. So what I would probably recommend you do is you go into specifics about your program. So I can give you kind of a brief overview here of the types of um, courses we offer and the rankings for them. Um, these are for these are basically rankings for undergraduate courses because you'll find in the UK that they don't really assess PhD or master's programs quite as, as thoroughly as they do for undergraduate programs. So generally speaking, universities normally show their undergraduate rankings. But regardless, you can see here kind of an idea of the types of courses we offer, but also how well we um, kind of we kind of excel at providing these courses to students. So, for example, we're first for architecture, marketing, sports science, psychology, sociology, business management, social policy, we're second. And then for pretty much all of our engineering um, departments, we're ranked either fifth or, or fifth, top five or top 10, depending on which, which department you're looking at. And then you can see their computer science, top 10, accounting finance, top, top five, and so on. But what I'd really encourage you to do is think about your area, whether it's a PhD or a master's, and really hone in on that. Look at QS World rankings, look at specific department rankings for your course, and then zoom out and think about the university and zoom out again and think about your environment. So. Yeah, don't worry too much about the, the rankings you see here. And I'd also say that if your course isn't here, again, don't panic. Some programs just aren't assessed. And also we haven't included all programs on the screen here today, just to give you an idea. Uh, fabulous. Okay, so then entry requirements. Um, so some of you might have applied already, you might already have an offer. So congratulations to you guys. If you haven't, I'm gonna give you myself, I'm gonna give you an overview of the entry requirements for master's courses here at the university. And then after that, Annalie will jump in to share her kind of uh, perspective about postgraduate or PhD student applicants and what we're looking for there. So in terms of masters, the academic requirement we're looking for is a GPA of between 2.8 and 3.0. And it would really depend on your institution. And it would also depend obviously on your application, the strength of your application and a whole other variety of things depending on the program you, you apply for. So actually this is kind of a rule of thumb but each application is considered on a case by case basis. And I would always encourage students, even if you've got slightly under 2.8, for example, if you put in an application, you will still be considered. Um, and we do take everything into account. It's not just the GPA, it's looking at your personal statement, it's looking at all your documents, and it's for the admissions team to really make an assessment of your overall kind of uh, application and looking at thinking about what you will bring to the classroom. So, I'd always say that's a caveat, don't be put off if you're slightly under the GPA, but if you are actually a 3.0 plus student, fantastic, I'd encourage you to apply for sure. And in terms of English, it depends on the programme. Most courses that are not School of Management Master's courses look for 6.5 overall in the IELTS test. Um, if you're doing a management programme or several other programmes um, that specifically require higher IELTS scores, it might be a 7.0 overall that they're looking for. And it would be 6.5 in each component. But just bear in mind that precessional courses are available. So if you can't quite meet your um, required score for English, you can come early and do a five week precessional or 10 week precessional like Tukche did. Um, it's completely up to you. Um, and we also accept a number of other tests. So although I've put IELTS here on the slide, actually we accept around 15 different um, tests now. So do, if you want to, log on to our website, look at postgraduate English language requirements, and you will see a whole range of tests there from online tests to TOEFL IBT, CAE, there's lots. So don't be put off if you haven't done the IELTS test. Do check our website for all of the tests we accept. Annalie, I'll just bring you in here, just perhaps give your perspective from a doctoral college kind of admissions hat. Yeah, absolutely, thank you. So I think you can, 
um, largely say that this, um, the entry requirements are similar for postgraduate research for doctoral doctoral study as well, although it does depend on the program. We we would call doctoral study as programs rather than rather than courses. And you're probably looking at a GPA score of over 3.0 if you're applying as an individual wanting to do a particular piece of research and perhaps if you already have a have a scholarship as well. Um, we have a have this as our sort of basic entry requirement. If you are applying to Bath through a competition, competition it's a competitive process then you're competing with a lot of other students, um, perhaps master's students, undergraduate students from across, across the world. And so there, if you're looking for funding specifically for a competition, uh, through a competition, it's much more competitive. And you're probably looking at schools a lot higher around sort of 3.5, 3 3.7 of, of that order. The English language, um, entry requirements are similar to postgraduate taught as well, but it varies slightly across different departments. Thanks, okay. James. Thank you, Ellie. It's brilliant. Really helpful. Um, perfect. And just also in terms of funding, so I'm sure many of you perhaps have already secured funding for your entire course, and that's fantastic. Congratulations. Perhaps some of you haven't, or you're thinking about applying independently, and you're thinking, what, what kind of scholarships, what kind of support can the University of Bath give me to help fund my studies? So I'm going to cover the master's scholarships we have, what we refer to as postgraduate taught scholarships. Um, and I'll just talk through them, give you a kind of a, a brief kind of idea of what they are. And then if you've got any questions, please do just put them in the chat. Um, so just to start with, for students who are applying for um, a course that's not a management master's. So it could be engineering, could be computer science. I saw a few of you put that in the chat earlier. It could be anything that's not a school of management masters. Then there are two scholarships available. The first one is the Dean's Award for Academic Excellence. And this is really focusing on your kind of academic profile, your academic credentials. So if you have performed very strongly in your undergraduate studies or during your undergraduate studies, and you have a very good GPA from a good university, you could be eligible for this award. The Global Leaders Scholarship is slightly different. It looks at your academic profile, but it hones in, it focuses a lot more on your kind of your skill set, your soft skills, perhaps your extracurricular activities. That you've actually, you know, what you, for example, you might have done an internship that's relevant to the program, anything like that, it really focuses on. And it really wants to bring in, as the name suggests, the future leaders. So people who have that kind of leader mindset, that kind of skill set that they're going to bring to the classroom that they can demonstrate in their application. And again, this is for students who are applying for any master's course except for management master's courses. And I'll explain that why, why that is in a moment. It's one application and you'll be um, eligible for both of these awards. So you don't need to apply twice, but one application in and you will be considered for both the Dean's Award for Academic Excellence and the Global Leaders Scholarship um, as long as you apply within a certain time frame, which I'll tell you about in a moment, you can be awarded one or even both awards if you're a very strong applicant. Each year, we have students who are awarded both, which accounts for around a 50% discount on tuition fees, which is, you know, a big chunk um, of money off the total cost of your tuition. And it really helps our students um, to kind of, you know, pay their way when they arrive. Perhaps there's not so much stress on them. There's not such a financial burden because obviously they've been awarded such a, a large scholarship amount. If you're thinking of doing a management course, someone mentioned earlier accounting and finance, for example, then is the MSc scholarship for you. And this has got a very similar criteria to the Global Leader Scholarship. So it's taking all sorts into consideration. It's looking very carefully at your application, looking at your academic profile, but perhaps more focusing on your own kind of skill set, your own kind of character. So you've got to really paint a picture of yourself in your application, be very specific, and you could be awarded a scholarship worth £5,000, which is around, depending on the programme, it could be, you know, 25% to 30% discount on total tuition fees. Again, it's one application. And the final one, I don't think anyone's mentioned the MBA award, so we won't go into too much detail, but if you're an MBA candidate, you'll be automatically considered for a scholarship worth between £3,000 all the way up to 30%. So different scholarships available to different students, depending on the course you're applying for, 
And the application windows are generally, um, they normally close in January, April and July, but this does change each year. So if you're thinking of coming this year and you're thinking of getting your application in soon, or maybe you've got an offer already, then I would strongly encourage you to start applying for the scholarship as soon as you can, or get your application in as soon as you can, so you can start applying for your scholarship. The next window after this one, so the, the 26th of April is when this upcoming window closes, but don't worry, there'll be another chance for you to apply up until July. So anyone who's got an offer, I'd say start getting your application ready, start preparing to apply for your scholarships. I know for uh, students who want to do a PhD annually, it's quite different. Um, it's a different process and so on. So would you like to just kind of give an overview of that as well? Yeah, I can do. Thanks, James. It's, I mean, for doctoral, it is a lot more complicated. So I don't think I could present it in a nice, easy way. I think the for scholarships, for international students, there are new opportunities that have, have opened up in the last year or so because of changing in funding in the United Kingdom. In um, the, the key time of year, probably to apply for uh, scholarships or for studentships, as we call them for doctoral, is uh, October time through until perhaps March, March time. So that's the concentrated time in the UK when we typically have uh, comp competitions. Um, there are other scholarships available and other opportunities available. So again, in the chat, I'll put a link through to our funding funding pages. And I'd also recommend to have a look at findaphd.com. Um, that is where we advertise all our PhD um, studentships for international students. Um, so keep an eye on those on those websites. And also we will put information up on the Bath website when competitions uh, become available and things the landscape for funding changes all the time so it's well worth keeping an eye on those sites thanks James perfect brilliant I think you explained it brilliantly there um okay so what we're going to do now then we're going to kind of move on to the next section because I know we've only got around 10 to 15 minutes remaining so we'll, we'll kind of speed on a little bit here um but what I do want to show you is kind of student life so as I mentioned earlier I think when you're making a decision on where to study, you really do want to start with the course, you know, the, the, the, the rankings for that program, zoom out and think about the university, you know, is it a good university, is it a prestigious university, and then you want to zoom out again and think about what's it like to actually be a student at that university, and why, is it for me, is it, does it kind of align with what I want to get out of a study abroad experience, and is it the right environment for me to really progress academically speaking. So we're going to kind of focus on student life here um, and obviously I'm going to bring in Barak and to share where I can to give your own perspectives because that's really important. Um, but what I want to first do is just introduce you to the campus because we are a campus university and it's a very beautiful campus as you can see here surrounded by lovely luscious green countryside and the campus itself has lots of kind of areas for students to have some downtime so we've got the student, the, I'm sorry, the sports training village down here the bottom left hand corner We've got the art center as well we're just next to that and there'll be more on that in a moment i'll show you a bit more um, detail about these facilities and if you look over here the bottom right hand corner this is undergraduate accommodation for our bachelor degree students also along there on the side there is also more accommodation for students doing a bachelor's degree here at the university also on the campus this area here is the parade and on the parade you'll find the students union where you'll find lots of societies and clubs to join there's the 24 hour library on campus, which is open every single day of the year, day and night, you can go and study. But I do encourage students to get a bit of rest time in where you can. Um, opposite that, opposite the library, there's the lake where students often will sit around and enjoy picnics in the summertime. But again, have a bit of downtime after their exams or their, their, yeah, their tests have completed. So there's a lovely little bit of a greenery there for students to sit down and enjoy. And also on campus, you'll find a convenience store and a supermarket. We have 13 different eateries, cafes, restaurants, all on campus. Um, the supermarket has import food as well, so you can get some home comforts um, and a post office too. Um, also on campus, there are also two banks. There's also uh, doctors and dentists. So it really is quite a nice, lively community here at Bath on campus. But if you just squint and look at the top right hand corner, that's the city of Bath itself. And although it looks quite far in this photo, perhaps it's not too far at all. So from the campus to the city on a good day by bus is between 15 minutes to 30 minutes. So you can easily get a bus and during term time, they generally come about every five minutes or so, although they're slightly less regular 
um, when it's not term time, so do bear that in mind. But all of our accommodation for postgrad students is in the city centre, but as I said, it's not a big city, it's very walkable, and you can, you can get a bus to campus and you can walk back because we're on a big hill. So it's recommended you, you probably don't walk to campus unless you're extremely fit. You can always, you know, on a sunny day, walk down to see the lovely views of Bath and head back to the city centre. So that's kind of just an overview of this, the campus. Um, Tukche, I'd like to bring you in maybe to start with about perhaps what's your favourite part of the campus? Um, where do you spend most of your time when you are at Bath, obviously when it's not locked down? Uh, yeah, I, I love spending time in front of Lake. <laughs> oh, yeah. And this is my favourite place. Uh, I like the sunset there and having lunch there with my uh, friends. Because it is a kind of a meeting point for us from other departments. Also, so we have a quite big uh, office. So we meet we, from the other offices. We we we would, uh, we would be there. Mm. Uh, and also, <laughs> we had a kind of experience with ducks there. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, the ducks. <laughs> the ducks can be quite lively, can't they? <laughs> Stress, I think. Yeah. Yeah, particularly if you feed them, they'll keep coming back for more, I think. <laughs> yes, exactly. It's a good choice, good spot. Um, brilliant. And um, yeah, I think we'll, Beric, do you want anything you want to add? Uh, yes, besides the lake, uh, sometimes when I'm stressed, I uh, want to uh, leave my PhD aside and have a walk uh, behind the uh, buildings. Uh, mm. If you know, uh, around the library area, behind that there's a nice uh, walking area mm. full of greenery and it's a good place to make you relaxed I think I like mm. it. yeah that's a good choice actually uh, yeah on the outskirts of the campus there's some really nice walks actually um, which actually even took me surprised by surprise because I, I wasn't aware of the the kind of routes you could take and um, when you do have a bit of free time so yeah I'm glad you've made the most of kind of the nice surroundings around the campus. Brilliant, thank you guys, I appreciate that. Um, so what we're gonna now do is then dive in a bit deeper and kind of introduce you to a few of the important services, the facilities at Bath, and also just briefly touch upon the accommodation options too. Um, to, so to start things off, we'll probably start on the, the bottom part of the campus. So all I want you to do is type in the chat, either if you want to see the sports, you wanna see the arts, or you wanna see the societies and kind of the social activities you can get involved in. So just in the chat, type sports, arts, or social. Sports, arts, or social. And uh, yeah, again, don't worry, I'm not going to pick on you. Um, just feel free to type what you want to see first. Sports, arts, or social. And I'll let you have 30 seconds or so. Type that in now. Social, sports. Okay. Someone said social and arts. We can see both, don't worry. We'll have time, hopefully. Um, okay, we'll start with social then, because we have got three socials and all oh, four socials. It's, uh, it's, all, it's all hitting up. Okay, perfect. We'll click on that first then. So we'll look at socials and then we'll go in and have a look at sports and, and also the arts afterwards. Um, so in terms of kind of what you can do, um, you know, in your free time, your downtime as a student, you'll find at Bath we've got a really proactive, really kind of, um, yeah, I'd say a very active students union with lots to do, lots of societies, lots of clubs, and you'll be able to meet students from across the campus, not just restricted to your department or to your course, by you know, being involved in the students union. It's a really integral part of being a student at Bath. So the students union is there to, as I said, for the social element, so you can join societies and clubs, more on that in a moment, but also to give you the chance to look for part-time work if you want it while you're studying at Bath. So we have the career service, but we also have the students union where you can you can go to kind of workshops about how to find work as an international student in the UK and also use their portal, which is called JobLink, which is kind of a search portal, a job portal where you can find all local part time work opportunities, both on campus and also in the surrounding cities of Bath or Bristol and so on. So lots of the, the activities that take place at the heart of the campus take place in the students union. And actually, there are, there are 140 different clubs and societies, 140 for you to choose from. So it re they really do cater for all tastes. So you might be coming in and you might really enjoy badminton. You might be really keen on yoga. So you can join the Yoga Society or join the, the badminton club, join the American football club. I've just chosen a few here. But as I mentioned, there are, in fact, 140 for you to choose from, from the Islamic Society to Meditation Society, even to, you know, the Turkish Society, etc. So... 
you don't have to be an expert. So some students are sometimes like, oh, I don't, I've never played badminton, so I can't, I can't join the badminton club. But actually the best attitude to have is just try it. You don't have to be professional. There are students who come to university and want to get new experiences like you, I'm sure, do too. To come to the university and just join loads of clubs and societies to get that chance to meet students from across the campus, from across the whole um, university population. And you'll, you'll get some new experiences and some treasured experiences, I'm sure, and you'll meet people from across the world, which is really amazing. To and so just to also focus on the, the Turkish society, just because I'm sure some of you might want to have that connection when you arrive. So we do have a Turkish society at Bath. They do things like they do welcome parties and th things like that for students. And so if you do come, you might be invited to the Turkish society welcome, welcome party, for example. Um, I don't know whether Barak or, or Tukci, are, are you involved in the societies at all? Or have you joined any societies since, since starting? Yeah, we joined, uh, I, I attended a few. Uh, okay. yeah. Which one? Uh, I think I mostly was attending the Turkish coffee sessions. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> Bit of a caffeine boost. Yeah. <laughs> and you too? Mm. Involved in any of the societies or anything like that? Yes, uh, I attended the Turkish society, some of their events. Okay, and it's nice. really good um, not to be away from your culture and uh, to practice your language as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nice. Yeah, sometimes it's even though you obviously want to get that study abroad experience, it's always nice to kind of, you know, speak in your own language at times and to meet people. From, from Turkey as well, so I completely understand that. And it's, it's great that you can do that, um, even though you're in Bath. Perfect. Especially when you are homesick. <laughs> yeah, it, it's exactly that as well. I mean, it's always, everyone gets homesick at some point, so exactly. If you want a Turkish coffee and, uh, uh, yeah, catch up in Turkish, then you can do that whilst you're on campus. Brilliant. Um, and also, people did also mention they wanted to see the sports and wanted to see the arts. So only very briefly, I'm just going to introduce you to the sports training village. So actually, we're a very strong university for sports. Again, I'm really, I mean, it pains to stress that you don't need to be a professional sports person to use the facilities. You, you, we welcome students of all, all abilities to join the, the university sports training village. And everything you can see here, the tennis courts, the running track, the rugby pitches, the swimming pool, which is an Olympic sized swimming pool. You can actually access all of this for no charge at all. So you just need to show your library card and you'll have access to these facilities. There are just additional charges for the gym and for sports classes, but I would absolutely encourage you to either join a sports club or even just to use the pool in your own time whenever you feel like it. So we're really good for sports and I'd always encourage students of all levels of all abilities to make the most of living in one of the best sports universities in the UK. It's a, it's a really nice place to, uh, to practice your sports or to learn a new sport too. And in terms of arts as well, because a few people did mention that very briefly, we, we have a, an art centre at Bath, which is called The Edge. Um, and this is really nice because we don't actually offer any kind of master degrees or bachelor degrees in art or dance or music. But we provide this kind of state of the art facility, um, it only opened about five years ago or something like that, for all of our students to actually practice the arts. So we still want students to develop that skill set and to be able to, you know, practice dance or go to the theatre society and practice theatre and acting or music and so on on campus at Bath because it's still very important and so students use the edge in their own time in their free time you know either in their societies or they just book out the space to use it with their friends or perhaps on their own if they need to practice some music um, but in the edge as well we have galleries so each year we have our students showing off their art as well as performing and, and ha having uh, theatre performances too so you know for students but also the wider community in Bath to come along and kind of see what our students can do and kind of see the abilities that our students have outside of the classroom. So the art centre is really good. And as I said, there's hundreds of oh, 140 different clubs and societies. Many of those practice in the edge. But as I mentioned, you can just use the facilities yourself and book them out as you see fit. So that's a really nice place for you to come um, for some downtime as well. Brilliant. Um, what I also want to go to introduce you to is the, the, the services. So I really want to show you not just, you know, obviously your course curriculum, you have time with your academic tutors, your academics to support you in writing your essays and so on. But there's also other support mechanisms and infrastructure there in place to help you as a student. So if you look here, we have the student support and I just want to kind of 
just highlight three different kind of services we offer to help you as a student settle in at Bath and to thrive as a student on your programme. First of all, academic support is really important. So we have the Academic Skill Centre at the university, and this is a team of trained experts in all things English, and they help students to kind of adapt to the new way of studying for many. So we have students coming from across the globe, as I mentioned, and often it takes time to settle in, to adjust to a new way of studying and a new way of writing or speaking in presentations and things like that. So the Academic Skills Centre offer one-to-one -one guidance. They run um, English courses to run alongside your own programme, your master's programme. So you can actually take uh, academic skills training programme alongside your studies and they run workshops throughout the year. So there's lots of support there. We don't just leave you to it. We really encourage you as a student to make the most of the support that's on offer. Again, welfare is really important as well. So it's about making sure that you have everything you need, you're, you're, you feel comfortable in your surroundings to be able to you know, settle in at Bath and to study here. So that's the medical centre. So that's kind of where you can go and see the doctor if you need to. We have faith support as well for students who've got, you know, religion, uh, the religious beliefs and they want to practice their religion on campus, they can do that. And also things like the immigration advice as well. So if you need, want to apply for the, um, the post-study work visa when you graduate, they can give you advice about that. And they can just help you if you're encountering any issues with your visas, et cetera. And finally, graduate support is another one I wanted to highlight. Um, as I mentioned right at the beginning of today's talk, we offer really excellent um, career support at Bath. We really focus on ensuring our students are work ready. And we do that by offering uh, careers um, advice, career service to all of our students from the moment you arrive at the university until, if you want, you retire. It's actually, it's indefinite. It's lifelong support. So even when you finish your studies, you can continue to use the career service. You can gain one-to-one -one support about how to apply for work, to apply for jobs. They can help you to identify kind of opportunities for you to apply for, and they can help you every step of the way from applying for the work, the, the, the work opportunity, applying for the job, you know, prepping for interviews, and also helping you to kind of pass tests and things like that. So the career service is excellent. Absolutely make the most of it. Um, and Barak, I hope you do soon too, because you're coming to the end of your course. It's maybe time to potentially start thinking about using the career service if you haven't done so already. And also we have a global, uh, a global alumni network too, there to support um, students, both when they're here, you can connect with our graduates. And when you finish at Bath, you continue to be a Bath alumni. So you, you welcome into our community and you can continue to you know, connect with the university and connect with graduates of the university too. Um, haven't got that much time, but I'll just bring one of you in here. Berak, perhaps, have you used any of the support at the university so far? I remember that I used the well-being uh, support in Four West, and I always attended the career service events uh, to communicate oh, with the graduate people and how to find job and yeah to interact more. Oh, perfect! That's pretty good going because often students will leave it till the very end before they start going to the career service. So it's very good that you've already started, you know, touching, uh, touching base with the, the careers advisors and kind of getting that support in early, which is great. Perfect. Um, yeah, with, you know, clock really, we've overrun already. So we're going to zoom through. Um, but what I do want to highlight is two more points. One of them is the accommodation. So we'll, we'll go there first. Um, and just to show you guys that we do offer um, all postgraduate students the chance to actually stay in university managed accommodation. Um, you do need to um, be an over, overseas fee paying student, which you probably all will be. And you also need to apply for the accommodation within a time frame. So this year it's March to uh, June actually, but generally speaking, it's March to July. So do check on the website um, on the year you're applying. So if you're applying this year, it's actually June. So get your application in soon. But next year it might be July that the deadline ends for guaranteed accommodation. After the window, you can keep a, you can still apply, but it's just not guaranteed any longer. But anyway, we have accommodation for all our students. Um, it's all in the city centre, all within easy reach of a bus stop that will take you directly to campus. Um, and you can choose basically um, based on your preferences. Is it, you know, do you want the same sex accommodation you want? Do you want family accommodation and so on? You can pick your preferences when you apply for accommodation. In terms of pricing, it's between £130 and £220 per week. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it depends again on what you go for, whether it's a studio, whether it's a private bedroom, but shared bathroom and so on. 
that obviously has an effect on the price of the, the accommodation you go for. But yeah, I'd say just rest assured, you can, you can get that university managed accommodation and it is guaranteed provided you apply within a certain time frame. Perfect. And just very briefly, um, Annalie, we're just going to quickly introduce the um, doctoral college as well. So any students who are talking about doing a PhD, you will mainly be based in the doctoral college, which will be over here. So I think it'd be a great chance just to bring you in, Annalie, to just explain a bit more about the doctoral college and about studying and doing a PhD at Bath. Yeah, so the doctoral college, we I think we kind of see ourselves in the doctoral college as being champions for of doctoral students. And there's over 30 staff in the doctoral college specifically dedicated to supporting you on your doctoral journey from admissions through your university life um, and linking through to careers and career development after you have graduated. And it's very much there to enable you to be successful in your doctoral, doctoral journey. We run all sorts of different activities from induction from when you're new, helping you to link through to other PhD students because you don't often come in to do a PhD in a, in a sort of cohort. So we help you make connections with other PhD students at a similar similar time um, at the beginning of your, of your studies. And we also help you develop your skills through sort of different work, workshops um, and produce a newsletter weekly that links you through to activities that are going on on campus, through to new guidance, through to workshops and skills events that we might be running through the doctoral college or hosting in the doctoral colleges as well. Um, I can also put a link through to an example for that. So something that we run called a slice of research, which helps you develop your presentation skills and gives you practice at presenting to an interdisciplinary audience giving you confidence to be able to communicate and also to be questioned as well, which is part of that research experience. So um, I'll pop a link in there, which is available so you can see the kind of things that we do to support you. Thanks, James. Perfect. Thank you, Annalie. Um, that's brilliant. So uh, with one eye on the time again, uh, what we'll do is we'll, we'll zoom past this part now, but hopefully it gave you kind of an idea of what the campus is like. Um, and kind of, yeah, the different opportunities there are for you on campus and the different support that's there for you too. Um, so what we're going to do now is very briefly look at the city. Um, it's a shame we haven't got more time to talk about the city because there's lots to do at Bath or in Bath and there's lots of attractions and there's there's real character to the city that I'd really like to convey if there were more, if there was more time. But uh, anyhow, just to very briefly go over some strong points about the city or some unique points. As I mentioned at the beginning, it's the only UNESCO World Heritage City in the UK. We're called Bath, here we go, here's kind of full circle. We're called Bath because we have hot springs. We're the, I think we're the only city in the UK that has natural hot springs, hence why we get to our funny name Bath. So if you were wondering, hopefully that's answered your question. Um, so this here is the Roman Baths, and as a student you can access here free of charge. You just need to show your library card or your student discount card, and you don't have to pay to access the facilities like this in Bath, um, but being a local. Um, also, you can join us for the Christmas market. It's one of the biggest Christmas markets in the UK and the whole city comes to life in November and early December with lots of little stalls like this popping up for you to get these kind of unique gifts for perhaps your friends in the UK that you've made or send back to Turkey um, for Christmas, if you so wish. A really nice thing also about Bath is, as well as obviously the city having lots to do, as I said, it's a unique city. It's got, you know, the Apple store, it's got big shops, it's got restaurants, cafes, Lots to do, lots of museums. Within 20 minutes, you're going to be in some of the most beautiful countryside. So there's lots to do on your doorstep, which is fabulous. Um, but we won't spend too much time here, but I will just highlight it is one of the safest cities too. And hopefully, um, Tukshe and Badak, you will also agree that it's a safe city to be in, to, to live in. Um, in fact, just for a few seconds, because I'm sure students want to hear from you more than me, let's just quickly bring you in if we have time, if you've got time. Um, Tukje, how have you found the city? Um, is there anything you'd like to share with students joining today about living in Bath as a student? That's more important than anything I can say. So feel free to talk in Turkish if you prefer, um, or English. It's up to you. Uh, it, it doesn't matter for me. <laughs> Maybe Turkish for those who are watching. Okay. Uh, Bath'ta şehir olarak uh, çok uh, sakin ve hani, huzurlu bir şehir. Küçük bir şehir ama böyle e, gerçekten yeşillikleriyle olsun, e, şehirdeki atmosferiyle olsun, diğer şehirlere göre 
biraz daha böyle o farklı bir kimliği var. İngiliz kimliği var. İns- hem insanlar ol- olarak olsun. Ee, bir İngilizle diğer şehirlere göre, kuzeydeki şehirlere göre özellikle e, karşılaşıp mesela bir ka- kafede çay içerken saatlerce konuşabiliyorsunuz. Yani en çok sevdiğim şehirlerden bir tanesi bu. Ee, sonrasında parkları tabii ki de yani zaman geçirmek ve dinlenmek için her e, küçük veya büyük bir sürü parkları var. Ee, başka ne söyleyebilirim? Öyle genelde çalışırken tabii ki de ofiste ve şeyde üniversitede olduğumuz için e, daha çok üniversitede vakit geçiriyoruz çalışırken ama şehirde de dinlenmek için bayağı iyi oluyor. Özellikle yeşil alanlar. Bu kadar. Perfect. That's it. Sorry, I couldn't, couldn't quite ask you. Perfect. Thank you, Tukçe. Um, and maybe last word from you as well, Barak, about your experiences of the city, if there's a little bit of time. Yeah, also, sorry, can I add, add a question to this question, please? Um, Barak and Tukçe, can you explain about the expenses you have to have to live in Bath as well, please? That's important. Uh, okay. Ne kadar bir yaşam gideri ayırdınız ya da ayırmak zorunda kalıyorsunuz aylık bazla? Şimdi Covid biraz etkiledi. Son bir yılı değil, bir önceki yılı düşünerek söylerseniz harika olur. Ben e, üç, yani üç farklı e, şeyde student accommodation olarak üç farklı yerde kaldım hatta. E, Presessional'da kampüsün içinde bir e, student accommodation'larda kalmıştım. Onlar bayağı güzel oluyorlar. E, yaklaşık 650 pound civarında vermiştim diye hatırlıyorum master zamanında. Daha sonra Master'da da şehrin içinde bir yine Student Accommodation'da kalmıştım bir yıl boyunca. O da böyle 350 e, pound civarındaydı. E, tuvalet ve lavabo hani içerideydi. Sadece mutfak paylaşımlıydı. Onun dışında doktoraya geçince e, tabii kendim bir şehir tavsiye yani bir aileyle paylaşımlı bir ev tercih ettim. E, orada da odayı kiraladım. E, o da 450 pound e, Pound'a kalmıştım ben. Bu kadar. Berrak ne kadar ihtiyacımız var bir ay için? Konak ve yani, birlikte. Tuğçe'nin de dediği gibi değişiyor. Yani aile yanında kalmak ya da başka bir e, arkadaşınızla evde evi paylaşmak. Ama en, en konforlusu bence tabii ev arkadaşınız da iyiyse evde kalmak. E, o da yaklaşık ayda 600 pound. Ev kirası ve giderler diyebilirim. Tamam, peki teşekkürler. Um, Anneli ayrılmak zorunda. E, çok teşekkür ediyoruz kendisine. Anneli yolcu edelim. Anneli, thank you very much for your uh, participation and for the information. Have a good day. You're very welcome. Nice to meet you. Apologies, I have to I have to leave now. Thank you. Thank you. Best wishes, everybody. Bye bye. Bye. Peki, teşekkürler Berrak, teşekkürler Tuğçe. Okay, we can carry on then, James. Oh, sorry, yeah, I never know when I'm meant to jump in or not. Um, perfect, we're going to wrap things up anyway, so yeah, I appreciate we've everyone slightly there. Um, but just probably to, to to finish this off, just by letting students know that, if, if they do want to, or if you do want to find out a bit more and have another opportunity to touch bases, I'm sure, you know, the councils at BAB will know about all of the activities we're running. Um, um, but just to let you know, we are running a virtual open day for students who want to get more information from the departments. You can log in. It's obviously free of charge. You just speak to members of the staff at the university. Um, but just probably open the floor now, I think, to questions at this time, Sevda, or do we need to kind of wrap things up? Um, question is fine, James. I'm, I'm just checking at the, at the same time. Okay. Uh, Barak has answered a couple of uh, architecture-related questions. Thank you, Barak. Um, yeah, just checking. I think we, we covered all the questions as well. It was regarding okay, time opportunities as an architect. There is um, one, I think, more question about the deadline for PhD applications. The, uh, PhD applications, um, the intake. How many intakes do we have for PhD applications? Yeah, so for PhD, there isn't like a, so obviously for master's level, there's a set entry point, which is September each year. But PhD level studies, it actually depends on the project you're joining. So there's two ways to really to join a program on PhD level. It's either to apply for a project that we're recruiting for on findaphd.com, for example, 
Uh, and that could be at any point throughout the year. And the other way is to actually suggest your own proposal. So contact the academics within the university and find a supervisor who would be happy to supervise your own research project. And again, there's no clear entry point, but I would just say bear in mind the, um, that if you want to apply for scholarships, like Annalise said earlier, actually earlier in the year. So I think it's between October and, and in early uh, December, I think it was. That's the best time to apply for scholarships. So if you're looking for funding, perhaps think about that. But there's no clear set entry point for PhD level um, studies at Bath. Okay, thank you, James. Uh, a question just came through. Uh, GPA 2.3 out of four. Is there any way um, the admissions can be flexible? Uh, which program is it the students interested in as well? Um, Mehmet, hangi bölümde okumak istiyoruz? Mehmet Fatih. Finance. Counting finance. Um, yeah, so 2.3 would be quite a way under what the School of Management Accounting and Finance Department would probably be looking for. They would be looking for around a 3.0. And particularly for that program, they are quite strict about that just because it's quite an intensive course. So it would be, I'd say it'd be difficult to be made an offer for that program um, just because it is quite a way under. If Yeah, 2.3 is quite a bit under what they're looking for. So, I mean, I can never say don't apply, but I would say that, you know, they would probably consider that quite a bit under the requirement for the program. Um, and they would be looking for a 3.0 plus for their accounting finance masters. Okay, thank you. Yeah, just checking the questions. Okay. Mm. We covered all the questions, but That's if fine. there are any, any more or any other questions, um, the students can ask. We have a couple of more minutes. Yeah, that's fine. And also, let me just share also, just in terms of, the, let's get rid of this, sorry. Uh, yeah, also, obviously, they do need to contact the admissions team, for example, if it's a specific question, or, or myself, or Annalie, with the doctoral admissions, they, they're welcome to do that. But as I said, obviously, BB counsellors are know all things Bath as well, so they're more than, uh, we'd more than encourage them to, to reach out to you guys to, to get that kind of, that kind of information. Okay, well. Is that everything, do you think? Well, I think we you covered everything. Um, I would like to thank you to you, to Barak, to Tuche for your time. It was very valuable. And thank you for all the students as well who participated today and who wanted to meet you and more uh, wanted more uh, know more about Bath and the university and the city as well. Thank you very much. Hope to see you very soon again. Thank you for the opportunity, guys. Really appreciate it. And also, I'd just also like to take the moment to say thank you, Tuche. Thank you, Barak, for your Fantastic answers, both in Turkish and English. It was much appreciated. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Teşekkürler. İyi akşamlar. Hoşçakalın. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Teşekkürler.